Hello everyone, my name is Cap and welcome back to the channel another 7 days to that video. I'm doing all this in Alpha 16.4 on the PC, but this really isn't specific to a version or anything I'm kind of doing, so this should work on consoles, future versions, past versions, etc. This is a video I haven't really covered in the past, and I had some people ask me, you know, there's a lot of videos out there, and I've done some myself, on how to fortify your own base, making underground bases with all kinds of traps and everything, but people have been asking, like, well, what do you do if you're kind of new to the game? How do you get, like, a house, say, like where we are now in Dyersville, and how do you fortify one of these to kind of protect you? So I'm going to do just a, just a short video kind of showing some basic tips on things that I've done in the past to help kind of fortify one of these, uh, these little houses here. Now, I chose this three-story one. And the reason why I chose this one specifically is because if you run through the house and look over here, you can see it actually has a basement. And this is going to be kind of key to some of the strategy I use for protecting myself here. Now, this isn't going to 100% protect the house from taking any damage. If you have a big enough horde, they're going to come in, they're going to do some damage. But this is just to kind of show you a few things that I do to keep myself alive when things start going bad and the hordes start getting bigger and you haven't had a chance to build your own base. So, let's get started. Alright, so I'm right at the moment I'm in the basement. The first things first is make sure you loot the house real good. Usually in these basements, it's like there's just usually a gun safe, and you're going to take some time to get in here because there's no lock pick in the game, unfortunately. You can't really just sit here and pick it. you got to find some sort of um, axe or a uh, pickaxe or a drill or something to be able to get in there. It's going to take a while, but make sure you kind of clear the house out. Now, one of the first things I like to do once I'm down here is to try and make a fall pit for these here. So what I'm going to be doing up at the very top is I'm going to be getting rid of these stairs here. I can do it from right here so you can kind of see where I'm at. This is the bottom step of the stairs you can see in the living room here. And so what I do here is I usually remove just the bottom two, but I'm going to save this one just for a minute until I get some things going. And then I come up down here and do the same thing and get rid of the steps down here. Now, if you fall down here after you've done this, of course, things are going to go bad for you. Uh, so then what I'll do is I'll just place a few... Just some random spikes in here, just the basic wood spikes. You can do log spikes, whichever ones you want to. These do more damage, but the big log spikes have more durability. And then I like to bust out the stairs, at least just these two first levels here, and put some more spikes. That way, anything that tries to get upstairs to where you're going to be hiding will fall down, deal with some spikes, and then they can't actually get back up the stairs to start with. So that's one of the first things I always like to do, is just make it so that the ones who are trying to get you have to go through a little bit of an obstacle. Now, as long as you have the doors in the house busted out, the zombies are going to try and go for the doors. Um, you have to break down the door to be able to get in the house to start with because they're all locked. So, if you want to put a locked door, reinforce, and all that other stuff on here, you absolutely can. But they're going to bust it down anyway. So, if you leave it open or just make a weak door, then they'll at least go for it. But if you have an open spot, then they're going to try and go for it. Now, something else I'd recommend you do is to go through and bust out all the windows and replace them with just solid wooden blocks. They're not reinforced. They have no durability. All it's going to take is the zombies just one little bitty spot to be able to knock them down. Now, occasionally you'll get to a spot you have this little metal framework right over here in front of this little lattice, and that will slow them down a little bit. But it's nothing really, really, you know, durable that's going to help out a lot. So what I usually do is just kind of go in and board off the windows. Now, of course, it's going to make it darker and stuff in here, but we're just trying to make it a little bit harder for them to get in. So that's what I usually do, at least on the lower floor. And then, like I said, I personally like to go through and just remove the doors. Or if nothing else, I'll put just like one little block in there and upgrade it so that they have to beat on it. It slows them down just a little bit. Okay, so now we have all the windows reinforced here just on the ground floor. I just busted them out, upgraded as far as I can. This is just to add additional durability to the house. That way, if they try and bust through them, which they typically try, this will at least slow them down a little bit. Like I said, I'm not so much worried about the doors, and I'm not, so, and I'm not so much worried about how well the house fares because you can always replace things afterwards here. So what we're going to do before we head upstairs is check out the outside. Now, something you can do is you can get rid of the porch entirely, but the problem is then the zombies come up and they start beating on the side of your house and it causes foundation issues. you got to get a company to come in and fix it. It's pretty costly. It's easier just to leave the porch in here because they're going to get in anyway and at least this saves them having to tear down stuff. But what I did do is I made some basic wood spikes and put it all the way around the house. They're still going to run into them, but it'll slow them down. It'll do some bleeding damage to them. I did that all the way around. And then something else I did too was just use some basic torches and put around the outside of the house. Um, I tested recently that torches provide the best source of light except for the trash can spotlights, but early on in the game, torches are pretty simple to make. So I just threw some on the outside here because at nighttime, when you're trying to fight off a horde of zombies, it's a little bit dark. And this way, at least it illuminates the area and you can kind of see what's going on. 
Okay, now let's head inside and go check this out. So we got the basement done. We got this right here. You don't have to go any further than this. If you're a little bit leery about climbing up there, you can always place a wood frame on there and then just pick it up if you're not quite sure if you're going to make it over there. Because if you fall down in there, things go bad real quick. So head upstairs and, of course, make sure you clear out the house as best you possibly can. And typically upstairs you'll have these little walls blocked off and you'll have to try and chop them down. That way you can get in and out and do what you want to. I'm not doing anything with the windows upstairs just because there's absolutely no point to. Um, one thing I always recommend to do is to take just a basic axe and chop off at least the bottom rung of the ladder. Because this will keep zombies from being able to climb up there. And that way all you have to do is just jump to get inside and the attic is going to be your new safe place. In many, many different games that I've played here, I've always made the attic of three-store house my home. There's all kinds of room for storage up here. It's very well fortified, and everything is good to go. Now, something I recommend if you do decide to change the attic to your little safe house is to bust out the windows on both sides here, and then just get some basic wooden frames. You don't even have to have anything more than that, and make a little walkway here. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to be able to get outside the house in case things start going bad or so you can sit up here with your gun and kind of pick them off as needed you can drop down onto the terrace down below you have an additional out besides just trying to go in the way you came if things get really bad right here and also by having frames go all the way to the edge of the house on both sides on the front and over here on the back like i've done here this will prevent uh, spider zombies from crawling up. The roof itself provides a barrier on the sides of the house so they can't crawl up over there, but just placing wood frames around here will keep them from being able to crawl up from the ground to get to you if you decide to make this your home. And of course, if you get really, really paranoid, you can always put like a hatch over the top of this thing so that it prevents zombies from being able to get inside. You can reinforce this door here, and this can be like your panic room if you want to. And that's pretty much it as far as, you know, how the upstairs goes. Once you get up here, it's going to be a while before the zombies can get to you. And something else I always make sure to do when I have this here is to set up just a few hay bales, which you can find in some barns and stuff. The farm is that direction from Dyersville, so it's pretty easy to find hay. And I just make a little pallet out here. And the reason why is because if everything goes to crap, you've got a whole bunch of zombies at your door and you don't know what to do next, you can always just walk off onto some hay bales, take no damage, and take off running if you have to abandon ship. And that way you don't have to try and go back through your little Home Alone style fun house of danger and zombies to try and get back out the front door. Or if you have to bail off from the top up there, then you don't have to worry about breaking the leg and inevitably getting eaten here. Now, this is all very basic level stuff. The, this is going to work out, but it's a very basic level stuff. Something else we've done in the past that does actually work okay is we would put up a small little wall like this. Nothing really complicated. We put up a wall like that, and then we would put a door right here. I don't have a door on me right now, but we put a little door right here because zombies are attracted to doors. And, you know, if you reinforce this all the way up or whatever, it's one more thing that the zombies have to go through to be able to get to you before they fall off and do a whole lot of damage down there. I don't always do this. kind of just depends on what level and how far into the world I am. But it does work just by putting an extra wall there. And you can do the same thing. Put a wall up at the top of the stairs, put the door the door there. Put a wall here and put a door there. You know, the more berries you put amongst yourself, just with wood frames, it's going to slow them down because they have to beat through them here. So if you can upgrade just one time, then they have to beat through that to be able to get inside. And they will. Granted, the wall has, you know, less durability than the wood block does. So if you decide to just bolt this up with reinforced steel frame bricks, then they're going to go through all the way around it and just beat the snot out of the side of your house. So, you know, be sure to upgrade everything around it if you're going to. And you can not upgrade the house itself should you decide, hey, you know what, I've got all kinds of extra supplies laying around. I'm going to go ahead and just reinforce the floorboards all the way around here. You can do that all the way you know throughout the house you don't have to like tear it down and start from scratch so you can you know totally reinforce it the more and more you need to but of course trying to get back out now you have to bust your way out so anyways i like i said i had a lot of people asking me some questions about well what if i don't have a base built somewhere and i just want to kind of reinforce one of the houses that's already there this is quick simple and easy this will work against keeping some of the zombies out. I'm not going to show you a video of me watching the horse come in because it's really not going to do anything. You'll see them kind of run in here. They'll beat on some walls and they'll fall down here. They'll do a lot of damage to the traps and die. There'll be a bunch of corpses down there. They won't be able to get up the stairs. They'll just be basic house damage here, but I promise that I've used this tactic many, 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 many times in the past, even against Blood Moon hordes, and do just fine. I mean, I hide up in the attic, but it's a good time to work on refreshing your you know your supplies building bullets or forging stuff or whatever else you absolutely want to 
So this is very beginner level, lots of other techniques. If you have other things you like to do to some POI houses, these base level houses like this, let me know. You drop it in the comment section so everybody else can see them too. Um, if you found the video useful or enjoyable, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button down below the video. And be sure to subscribe if you're not already so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you guys so much for your time. You have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later.